Hello class, today we'll be learning about Manuel Castle's Network Society. Manuel Castle Olivin was born on 9 February 1942 in La Mancha, Spain. He did his schooling and college in Barcelona, Spain, gained his doctorate in sociology from University of Paris. Castle actually was basically a Marxian, but he now no longer identifies himself as a Marxist, though he himself acknowledged that he has not renounced Marx. But he thinks that Marxism uses class as his major lens of analysis. But he is interested in ideas which cannot be classified under just class perspective alone. These are few of his work, The Urban Question, A Marxist Approach, City, Class and Power, The Information Age, The Network Society. When you're thinking about network society, it was a word which was coined by Norwegian sociologist Steen Bratton in 1981. He describes a society which is powered by network information and communication technology. Jan van Ding in his book The Network Society again popularized it. But it was actually Manuel Castle who popularized it to a great extent. We also find a similar term like network society, the wired society, which was popularized or put forward by James Martin. Like various other theorists, we see that Manuel Castle also studied about the evolution of society or the transition or transformation from agrarian to capitalism. But when this transition is happening, it is no longer centered on the production of material goods. But here in the network society, it is more about the information and knowledge that has been produced. Manuel Castle gives a definition of network society. A society whose social structure is made up of networks. A society whose social structure is made up of networks powered by microelectronics based information and communication technologies that generate information. So social structure is resulting from the interaction between these new technological paradigm and the social organizations at large. So Manuel Castle looks at society from a new perspective and he gives these two things as very essential. The microelectronic, and second, the digital perspective and these technologies, how it has revolutionized the way people are going on. Hence, he concentrated on the technological advancement rather than globalization or capitalism. Unlike other theorists who were more concentrating on the globalization perspective and on the capitalism perspective. The term network society refers to the social structures of this new age. Network society has a set of interconnected nodes. And these nodes are often intersecting at many points. The culture of real virtuality, according to Castles, forms the real architecture of modern society and is the dominant node of social relations. Network for Castle is a decentralized system of nodes. Communication happens at each and every node and it is a more open structure. This communication system can contract and expand, according to our wish. Hence, communication is by and large multi-dimensional and multi-directional and not constrained to time and space. The new digital technology has influenced a society in such a way that the domain of our private life has been replaced by the global. So things happening in our small life is 
been witnessed and noticed by a global community because digital networking has overcome the historical limits of time and space. Common features of network society. Communication networks are the backbone of the network society. Like the power network was important in the industrial society, we find communication networks are important here. Network society allows us to be in different places at the same time. You can actively participate and you can participate in more than one activities because of this network society. People get also opportunity to communicate with others instantly. Network society makes it possible to conduct virtual protests. The myriad of cultural and ideological fusion happens around the world. We are more an open and accepting community nowadays. There is an exponential crowd contribution. He argues that Netter society is contributing to a fundamental change in our culture. The new development is a culture of real virtuality, which describes a culture that is organized around electronic media. He says that the space of flows and timeless time are the material foundations of the new culture. So this new culture, which has happened because of the connectivity, has two things, the space of flow and timeless time. The concept of timeless time refers to the collapsing of time in global information network. For example, the automated financial transaction that happens nowadays. He also says that this is self-destructive. Why it is self-destructive? because there is no control over it. That is why it is called as self-destructive. Few characteristics of network society. New economy. Second, the transition of sociability and new forms of state. The new economy, production, distribution and management. All these things happens in network society and he is talking about how to delineate the new economy in the network society here also he talks about productivity the increase in productivity when you're thinking about network society what is this productivity that is the generation and diffusion of new electro new micro electronic digital technologies or of information that is coming every every day or every week or every month. It's being updated. New things are being produced and it is being consumed by people and becomes more innovative too. We also find that labor has changed. It's become more self-programmed. -program it's autonomous in nature. Earlier times, labor, which was stable, which was protective, is slowly being eroded. And the transformation of labor from the traditional to the competitive has come. Diffusion of new forms of organization is around networking. How the new forms of organization had coming up. Earlier, there were large corporations. But today, these large corporations are actually being decentralized. Because it's being decentralized or uh, decentralized, new groups of people are coming up. New groups are coming, new ventures are coming up. In a networking economy, the activities is performed by networks of networks built around specific business projects and accumulation of capital takes place in a global financial market. That means corporates are actually being decentralized and new people are coming into the market. They are also getting uh, established. They are being accepted. And thus, global financial market is growing. Second is the transformation of sociability. Network users have more friends and contacts active in social space. Almost all of us are accustomed to using of Instagram, of Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, LinkedIn, or anything. We have these social spaces or we are able to have contacts with people in different parts of the world. 
so we have a wider friend circle and contact so we are no longer isolated we are able to contact a lot of people and these technologies increase sociability four elements of sociability network individuals that is he himself is actually building a network or building self selected communication networks and we find the transformation of communication the picture itself reveals how communication has moved from the earlier times to the newer times how we are able to talk to a person just looking at the person on just the opposite side of the globe how we are connected with each other and how these connections can intersect at many points it is self directed mass communication initiated by the individual or individuals that is people themselves are trying to communicate with a lot of people so that they can have ideas about what's happening everywhere political process is also transformed under the condition of culture of virtuality trends of sociability conglomeration of local and global cultures communication system has been increasingly digitalized and from mass media we are moving on to multimedia mass media like newspaper or radio which was a more of a one way communication to a multimedia process where we can have dialogues we can have people reciprocating to what we are putting forward it is less centrally organized hence less centrally controlled and so no authority to control them hence who are absent in this space is absent everywhere presence in space is necessary to build counter hegemony or hegemony itself the third thing is a new form of state now world is no longer centered around nation state or the notion of nation and state today it's becoming more of a transnational notion people can contact anyone anywhere it is not confined to boundaries manuel castle conceptualizes the network society as governance is operated in a network of politically political institutions that shares sovereignty in various degrees and reconfigures itself in a variable geo political geometry network is not the future but we reach as the next stage of human processes but it is a point of departure it's not actually the destination or we have not reached the destination the final point of our journey as human beings but this is just a departure or this is just a starting of another way we have to move forward for the future communication how it will happen there were few criticisms which is put forward it requires public sector reformation bureaucratical setup had to be revamped it requires total overhauling of total school system and stimulate creativity and innovation redefine the condition of shared growth in the world to recap my presentation we today studied about network society which was put forward by manuel castles which he wrote in his book the network society in 2009 he defined network society as a society whose social structure is made up of networks powered by micro electronics based information and communication technology that generates information network for castle is a decentralized system of nodes and communication can occur at each and every node the three characteristics that he gave was new economy transformation of sociability and new forms of state and he also states that the presence in space is necessary to build counter hegemony or hegemony thank you